In this video, we're going to be looking at some transformations, and in this case, the transformation has already occurred. So we're going to be given both the pre-image set, uh, that's going to be some figure, probably a triangle or something like that, and then an image, and then we're going to try to determine which transformation actually occurred, and these are all going to be isometries. So let's look at this example here. The question is, what single transformation maps the blue pre-image to the red image? And uh, before I go along with this, uh, if we just had one point, there might be many, many answers. For example, if the, if the pre-image set was just one single point, and then the image was, would also be a single point, then uh, we might get there by translation, or reflection, or rotation. could be glide reflection. There could be many ways that we could get there and uh, narrows it down a little bit if it's a line segment, but still there might be many ways to get a line segment to a line segment. But it turns out that if you get three non-collinear points, like the vertices of a triangle, um, then in most cases there's going to be only one transformation, a single transformation that will get you to a certain uh, particular image from a particular pre-image. So that's why we like to use triangles or, or larger size polygons, uh, larger number of sides, to to work with these uh, types of problems. And actually triangles are, are kind of good enough because we can see what's going on with a triangle. Then really it's just more of the same kind of thing when we work with quadrilaterals. Okay, so let's get back to our question. Our question is what single transformation is occurring here? Now hopefully you can just look at this and maybe go ahead and tell what happens because you can visualize what happens visually and dynamically with a rotation or a reflection or a translation. And hopefully here you can see that maybe if we just slide this down, a translation might be what we're looking at. Well, the way to, uh, one way to look at this to see is to look at, uh, connect up what appears to be pre-image to its image point with a line segment. And so we get these these three line segments. Well notice that they're all the same length and they're all basically going, they're also parallel. So if they're the same length and parallel, that's going to be a translation. And the vector that defines a translation is any one of these three copies that we have here. So that is a, uh, that's a translation. here. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, regardless of where this might be, how, what might this, what might this be here? Well, one thing we could do again is we could connect up what appears to be pre-image to image points like this. And what do we see? Well, this time, once again, we see that they're parallel, but they're different lengths. So there's a good chance that might be a reflection. And, and what we can then do is, is find the midpoints of these. Okay, and we can do that uh, with a ruler or with a, or with a compass and straight edge. And then basically connect, see if those actually turn out to be in a straight line. And if they are, and that line is perpendicular to each one, then we've got ourselves a reflection. Okay? And in fact, that's exactly what we have here. It's a reflection. And so the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of these. So if you did the perpendicular bisectors of all three of these line segments, and we would see that those are the same, then in fact we have that. We have a reflection. Now here I'm using geometry sketchpad commands to construct things like midpoints and perpendicular lines and so forth. Okay, um, But some of this you can do with, with compass and straight edge constructions because we've talked about how to make these things. Now if they do actually uh, cross the mirror line then you have another little uh, checkpoint. In fact an easier way to actually construct the mirror line because points on the mirror line will be fixed. So if there are any fixed points, um, then in fact the, uh, the figures then will, um, 
the, the line of reflection, the mirror line, will be through those fixed points. So actually we could have just connected up these fixed points with our straight edge to make our mirror line. But again, it needs to go through those uh, through those uh, uh, perpendicular bisector there. Okay, what about this one? Hmm. Well, let's once again let's let's see what happens when we connect up. Looks like that point probably matches that one. That one looks like it's going to match up with that one, and this one with this one. Oh, wait a minute. These lines now are not all the same. Uh, or they're not all the same direction. They're not parallel. So we have them. It looks like they're kind of moving around a little bit. Okay, this might be a rotation. Okay, now where would the center of the rotation be? Well, remember something about... Uh, about circles, okay? A circle has to uh, be centered at the center, has got to go through both A and A prime here. But one thing we know about the circle, it's the same distance from both A and A prime. The set of points which are equidistant from A and A prime are all on the perpendicular bisector of the line segment connecting them. So once we've made this line segment, uh, line segments, all three of them, we can construct their midpoints and now we can make a perpendicular bisector here by constructing the perpendicular line. There, there are compass and straight edge ways of doing this as well. Construct this one. And then we construct a third one. Here's the moment of truth. We find out if it's a reflection or not. Because what should happen here? If it is a reflection, all three of those will cross at a single point, And that will be the center. So we should be able to draw circles centered here and notice that each of those circles is going to contain a pre-image and image point pair. A, these, this, the inner circle contains the points A and A prime. The, uh, the, the other one is B and B prime and then C and C prime. And then of course then the final thing to do would be to, to measure the angle from A to the center to A prime to get the angle of rotation. So here I did the uh, here I measured the angle from C to center to C prime. And so the angle of rotation here is about 78 degrees. Okay? So that's a rotation. What about this one right here? Well, let's first connect up pre-image to image points. Would that be a translation? No, those three vectors are not the same vector. They're not, no, definitely not uh, parallel. Since they're not parallel, it's not a reflection either, right? Let's see, let me hide that. So not a, tra okay, is it a rotation? Well, we could connect up pre-image to image and look at the perpendicular bisectors. Let's see, this is a little messy. So here we find this one. Its perpendicular bisector is the screen one here. Here's a line connect connecting C and C prime. Its perpendicular bisector is the green one here. And then the brown line or maroon line connecting up B and B prime is there. There's this midpoint. Perpendicular bisector is here. So we want to see where all, all three of these should intersect at the same point. Well, they don't. So, since they don't all intersect at the same point, definitely not a rotation. Okay, how about a reflection? Well, we've kind of already eliminated that one. Okay, because what we have here is we connect up the pre-image and image points again. We look at the midpoints. It does turn out they're all in a straight line. Okay, but the, these lines aren't parallel. If these, if these lines here were parallel... Then, they, then the line connecting up their midpoints would be perpendicular to it. And so we would actually have a reflection. And we would get... So, so we can look at that line here and reflect it over. We're going to get this brown image. Okay? But it turns out if we now take that and then, uh, and then translate it, 
then we're going to get our final image. So that's a reflection followed by a glide, but it's also a glide reflection. So we can take a translation, do that first, and then reflect it over that same line. And that's going to give us the uh, glide reflection. Or if we'd rather do the reflection first and then the, then the translation. Same thing. So this is the same vector whether we flip it first and then translate or translate by the same vector and then flip. Uh, let's see. Let's do the same point. This is, uh, this is point B. So flip first then translate or B here translate then flip. Let's see. Let me get one that I've got. I actually got the vector drawn out. So I've got vector A from, from A. So A flip go over and flip to get A prime or you can flip or you can uh, flip A first down here to this point right there and then translate. Because these are all these are all the same vector whether we translate first and then flip or flip and then translate. And it turns out that those are really the only possibilities if it's an isometry. That you can get there with a single glide reflection, a single rotation, a single um, reflection, single translation, um, or the identity. And it's one of those one of those five things if if it is an isometry at all. Okay.